But the world that Jesus referred to is not the world, this world, in a physical sense. He is not talking about the rocks and the trees and the waters and the skies, the seasons and the sun. No, he is talking about the mean, cruel world that is controlled spiritually by Satan. Uh, remember, Jesus tells us that you are not in the world, but you are up. You are in the world, but you're not of the world. And let me take a moment to tell you that this cruel and mean world, uh, the old blues singer once wrote a line that talks about the attraction of the world and the world's order. He says, bright lights in big cities gone to my baby's head. And the world system turns strong men into addicted adults. The world system turns structure into separate ways. The world system makes young girls look like old women and makes old women that try to wear spandex look young. And the world system mocks spiritually and lifts up devastations. And in other words, a believer of this world is not our home. But Jesus gives words here in the upper room to prepare us for the worst and yet anticipate the best. Uh, first, the first thing he does is he refers us to the words that he has spoken to us. Uh, let, me, let me say it again. He refers us back to the word that he has spoken to us. And although he is directly speaking to the apostle, he's also speaking to us. And is there anybody here that would thank God that Jesus knows how to talk to you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Do, do, do you know that there's power available when Jesus speaks? He, when Jesus speaks, he can say peace and winds and waves will take a vacation. Uh, when he speaks, the closed ears will open and uh, strung up tongues will loosen. He can come forth and speak forth a dead man and he will answer and turn death uh, in a funeral after service into a family reunion. He can come hither and a watery body can become an unusual walkway. He can say to somebody, touch me, and people will search all around and find out who he's talking to. Anybody know that whenever God speaks, stuff begins to happen. And somebody here knows that you would have given up a long time ago, but you had just one word that kept you going. Am I talking to anybody in the building that says, listen, I would have thrown in the towel a long time ago, but one word kept me going. You were going to quit, but you understood that the word says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You was going to throw a pity party, but you said weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. And every now and then you got to get to a place where you remind your own self of what the Lord has spoken to you. I thank God for what everybody else spoke in my life. I thank God for when people speak accolades of money. But what matters the most is whenever God speaks to me, I know I can take it to the bank and bank on that what God spoke it shall come to pass. It says it is important to listen to what God has spoken to you. He says, I have spoken unto you. These things, these matter these prophecies that is in me and in him, you might have peace. The key is in him. You can get peace no other way, uh, no other methods but by him. Uh, uh, the Greek word here in Renas suggests that in him, in him there is peace. In him there is rest. In him is quietness. In him there is peace between individuals. In him there is an experience of the Messiah's peace. In him, there is a way that leads to salvation. In him, there is an assurance of salvation. In him, there is tremendous fellowship. In him, there is intimate communion. In him, there is no failure. In him, there is life and life everlasting. In him, there is hope and trust. It, 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 and the Bible says, in him, we have, we're have we able to move and have our being. And there's anybody here that knows that we can't do nothing but unless it comes by him. George Morrison, the theologian, says that peace is the possession of adequate resources. Another writer suggests that peace depends on an appropriate relationship 
And spiritual resources depend upon spiritual relationships. And, and Christ, if Christ isn't the source of encouragement and peace of our lives, watch this, then the devil is the source of discouragement and sin. Uh, let me say it again. I said if Christ is the source of encouragement and peace, then the devil is the source of discouragement and sin. You must understand that Satan works overtime to discourage us in this life. He throws all that he can and causes us to lose sleep, to lose patience, to lose hope, to lose joy, and to lose our sanity. And all I know that through Christ Jesus, I have peace. Uh, that's why Romans 5, 1 says, I have peace with God our Father. In Proverbs 16, 7, he says, when my ways please the Lord, I can have peace with my enemies. Uh, and Hebrews 12, 4 says, I can follow peace with all men. And while the world is out of control, I can still have peace. While, while the crime rate is up, I can still have peace. While the stock market is crashing, I can still have peace. While there's wars and rumors of war, I can still have peace. And is there anybody here that can testify that even in the midst of turmoil in my life, when you're connected to Jesus, Jesus has a way of easing the pain and giving you peace. Uh, you, you, you may not have went to sleep on last night, but when you started getting connected with the power source, God put you down on your pillar and you went to sleep like a baby because the Bible says the peace that he gives you surpasses all. I can't figure it out don't know why I'm sleeping at night when hell is raising all around me got bills stacked high and don't know why I'm able to sleep at night is because God is able to meet me in my midnight hour and give me peace am I talking to anybody that God showed up when confusion was all in your house when God showed up when trial was all around you and said listen baby you ain't got to worry about anything I came that you might have peace Somebody say, I thank God for peace. Uh -huh. I may not have no money, but I thank him for peace. I, I may not have a job right now, but I thank him for peace. I, I may be going through all around, but I thank him for peace. Uh, and as long as I got peace, I got my mind intact. As long as I got peace, I know that everything is going to, as long as I got peace, I can wake up in the morning and still smile because I know the peace of God. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen Deacon Bass, I've seen believers go to hell and back, but yet have peace. Uh, the apostle Paul is shipwrecked, he is beaten, he is ridiculed, he is tested, and still dis uh, demonstrated a life of peace. Somebody, her husband walks away and leaves them with a house full of kids, rent is due, but still have peace. Someone is well one day and the doctor says you're sick to nest but still has peace. And, and some things you may be going through right now got trouble on every hand, storm clouds around you, friendships devolving, and yet you can still say, I have peace. I can't explain it, but I can explain it. I can't tell it, but I can tell it. I have the peace because I'm in him. I, 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 am I talking to anybody that's in him? I, I, I'm not talking about folks that's just around him that casually have a conversation with him. But I need to talk to about five folks in the building that can say I'm not just around him. I'm just not near him, but I'm in him. I, I, I wake up with him on my mind. I, I go to sleep with him on my mind. I take him to my crazy job. Y'all ain't saying that here. I take him while I'm driving all down there. I got him on the inside of me. That's why I like folks that can walk around and don't allow things to bother him because you're walking around knowing that he's in you and you can declare that the blood of Jesus covers everything. Is there anybody here that said, I'm glad that he's in me? At peace because I am in him. I'm just not on his premises or on his property. I'm not just within 100 yards of him. I'm in him. And the good news is not only 
that I'm in him, but he's in me. Uh, somebody say, that's good news. I, I, I'm just not in him, but, but I thank God that he resides on the inside of me. I have a feeling that I'm not the only one in this room that is in him. And I'm not the only one who found out that without Jesus, there is no peace. But to know Jesus, there is peace. This peace that I have moves me out of the moves me to the category of an overcomer. Uh, let me tell you that every believer is either an overcomer or is overcome. Uh, can I talk to somebody? I said every believer is even an overcomer or overcome. Jesus says, he says in the text, uh, he says, in the world. The, the, the NIV reads, in this world, uh, this cosmos, uh, this world that we are in, but of. Jesus says, ye shall have or ye will have tribulations. This is not a maybe or a might or a could. It is definitive. Uh, the syntax of this argument is that you might as well get ready for it. You might as well get prepared for it. Anticipate it. It's a sign in your destiny that you will have tribulations. And somebody here has had pressures all week long. You got pressure in your family. Pressure on your job. You got pressure in your checkbook. You got pressure even in the church. And we live in a pressurized world. And everything is pressurized. And, and let me tell somebody here that if you have not had any pressure in your life, just keep on living. Uh, pressures will come. But Jesus says uh, that what Satan meant for evil, God meant it for our good. And what I have discovered is that when you live in a pressurized world, you get a pressurized testimony. Uh, uh, you, you get a pressurized shout. You get a pressurized dance. You don't just care what others says that I was in the pressure cooker. I felt pressure, but the Lord made a way out of it. No way am I talking to anybody that says, listen, I know what the preacher talked because just this week I didn't have some pressure, but I've learned how to get in my place and get a praise and learn how to turn my pressure into a praise. Can I talk to somebody in here that's been through some pressure, but you said I'm not letting my pressure overtake me. I'm not going to let it make me lose my mind, but I know how to deal with my pressure. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I know how to deal with my pressure. The Lord will make a way somehow. I know how to deal with my pressure. When my enemies and my foes come against me, the Lord shall lift up a standard. Is there anybody here that says, I don't mind being in a pressure cooker because I got a pressure breaking praise. 